five minutes after uh, seven o'clock. Um, we're here to have one application tonight, which is the application by Shaw Supermarket, Inc. and O'Reilly Auto Parts for a major site plan review associated with repurposing of a vacant retail space. And um, before we start, I'm going to swear in all those that intend to give testimony in the matter before this board tonight. Uh, if you intend to give testimony, please raise your right hand. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Penalties of perjury. I do. Yes. Okay. I don't see, because I can't see Craig. Craig just said yes. Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> And but we don't know about Alicia and, and Trish. Yes. Will you be giving testimony yes. tonight? Yes. Oh. <laughs> did, did you raise your right hand? Yes, we did. <laughs> um, yeah. So... I guess I need an overview, and Greg, you're doing this. Please start. Yes, I will. Um, let me give. You're, you're, you're not. You're, you're not. Uh, a video would help. Are you, is there any reason you're not on video? Nope. No, let me. Uh, let me see if I can get that to work. I just sometimes it slows me down. <laughs> We may need to go back to a personal appearance period. I appreciate the problem, Greg. So we'll be tolerant, but I we need to start here somewhere. That's fine. Not a big, not a big deal. All right. So let me share. Um, you know what? I was intended to show my screen, but it, I'm getting a message that says "host disabled participant it's, it's, screen sharing." You're going to have that in two seconds. <laughs> You should have it now, Craig. All right. Well, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to present our project. Um, on our on my screen, you should be able to see our proposed exterior elevations of the post remodel O'Reilly Auto Parts, which we propose um, right now. Uh, we have an existing vacant facility which appears to be a former Staples uh, office store based on the colors. Can't confirm that 100%. Yeah, it is. That's correct. But it, uh, but it appears that this building has sat vacant for quite some time based off of some uh, evidence of disrepair, um, some trash or other things that are happening there. And we believe that as we um, make our improvements to this facility that uh, we will make some vast improvements to the area, if not just the building itself. And with that, we hope that we can find support from your town in order to allow us to proceed with this, which will be mutually beneficial to everybody, um, O'Reilly, the public of um, the town of Berlin and surrounding neighborhoods, and to the town of Berlin itself. Um, so let me close this and kind of show you what we are proposing, floor plans and site plan. Craig, before you, you go further, is this property under new ownership, relatively new ownership? I'm not aware. Um, Thomas, can you comment I, on that? I can speak to that. I believe there's been a, uh, a change of hands uh, in the last year or so. Uh, Thomas, I appreciate your, your coming here. Um, we've tried to work with former owners in the past, and it, it wasn't the most easiest thing to do. So I do appreciate your coming here and, su and supporting this project. Yeah, happy to be here. Uh, you know, we we have a ground lease at this location, so it's not like a traditional lease. We have a lot of say of what goes on on the property versus where a landlord, uh, we have a, a normal ownership structure uh, where the landlord has a say, like likes to be involved. So they're, they're pretty much, you know, coupon collectors and we, we handle pretty much all the, the questions that you may have for stuff like regarding the property here. So Thank you. So effectively, you are the applicant. Thomas. Uh -huh. Pardon? 
You're, you're, you're asking that to Thomas, correct? I'm, 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 Thomas. I, Thomas. Yeah, I'm in proximity. Oh, sorry. I am, we, we are an authorized agent of the, the we have authority from the, the landlord to act in, uh, on behalf of any build out here, so. Okay. And, and, uh, cur and currently the, the way the application has been submitted is under the name of O'Reilly Auto Parts with, with the permission of any other interested parties, ownership, sublease, et cetera. Yeah, so, I was speaking, I was speaking, thank you, Greg. I was thinking of speaking of the legalese of it. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, I appreciate the role that O'Reilly's playing in this application. Very good. Great, so, great. So our intention is to try to minimize the amount of work done both on the site and on the building itself. Um, we do a plan on, as shown on other, other portions, uh, so let me just go show the site, plan, the floor plan. I'll show you a better floor plan. So the floor plan basically consists of an area, which is the main public area with their retail merchandising. And then with the majority of the store, so that, that being in the gray area here, um, public area, but with the rest of the store being for inventory, um, as you all know, there's millions of different styles and models of automobiles and not one one car uses every single type of brake parts or whatever it might be so with that being said we have to carry a very large inventory of of parts for different vehicles um, both internal combustion and also new ro also rolling out and supporting many electric vehicle and hybrid vehicle um, models so um, the stores tend to be fairly large, um, this not being uh, an anomaly. Um, so 99% or I should say 75% of the store is inventory with 25% plus or minus being area for other accessories, air fresheners, um, other knickknacks that somebody might want to um, put on their vehicle. Um, so we are not proposing to enlarge the building, um, not changing any of the building massing, uh, pretty much keeping the building as is with just most 99% of the work being done on the ex on the interior. I'm sorry, I almost misspoke. Doing on the interior. Um, we propose, like I said, to keep the building mass itself. We're not going to um, raise the roof. We're not going to in in, enlarge or or create large big parapets or roof masses or anything of the sort. So the integrity of the building is going to stay pretty much as what it is right now. Um, we do propose to paint the exterior brick, change the front fascia and siding of the main roof element, and then Overall, just clean up what we see on the three sides of the building that are exposed. Um, there's one building we share with the Shaw's grocery store, and therefore there can't be any, uh, no, we're only a, a three-sided building at this point. Um, and just overall cleanliness. I know that there are some other things that have been asked by the town, um, but uh, we are, our attention is to try to do as much as we can within reason in order to make this project a possibility. And with that, I will uh, give the floor back to the town for any questions or other question, um, comments. All right, so there'll be no change to the exterior, is that correct? Other than, than, than cosmetic. Cosmetics? Correct. Um, no, just clean up and paint. Um, my maintenance and repairs as needed, but not not in, not changing the height of the roof or the parapet, not adding any new large storefront masses. We do need to in install one new egress door that is visible right here, which is going proposed to be just a solid metal door for um, 
egress, emergency egress only, which will be try to be blended and, and matched to paint the surrounding materials. But other than that, everything is going to stay relatively the same. How about your mechanicals, Greg? Uh, mechanicals will all be rooftop units, which are intended to be fully screened by the parapet. So they should not be visible at all from, from the parking lot or neighboring or nearby streets, unless there is a major altitude change where they can see down in, onto the building, which based on my understanding of the area, um, there's no tall hills or anything like that that would uh, allow that line of sight. You're replacing all the mechanicals, correct? Correct. What, what other what other items like that are you replacing? Um, we are intending to clean up a lot of like, for example, right now in this area, there's an existing roll up dock. Our intention is to I don't believe our intention is to actually use that loop going forward. We're going to clean that up. Um, and we will be using that. It looks like a little bit, but clean that up, make sure it's in good working order. Um, intending to add a new uh, ramp out the back door and then a new trash enclosure, which is actually just going to be a trash dumpster area, not an actual enclosure with any walls or anything like that, but just a new location to make sure that trash stays all in one location. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, trying to minimize the amount of work as much as possible, being uh, conscious to budgets and other things that, that we need to do. Will this store serve as a warehouse for other O'Reilly Auto Parts in the area? Not not a warehouse per se. It will provide slight support to some of the smaller um, locations. Um, this actually is intended to replace a store, which is let me get the address in the next town over. Let me remember um, two seven seven Morrison Road in Barry. Am I am I spelling saying that right? Barry. 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 Okay. So it is intended to replace that. So they will be closing that location and moving over here, but um, it is not per se a a warehouse. Um, but it is a because it is a larger store and does have more more SKUs than some of the other smaller stores. There will be some support from this store, but it, it won't be done via large delivery trucks it'll be mostly done by small passenger cars and or small pickup trucks okay the location you just mentioned is that the warehouse or is there a retail store there it's a retail store it does appear to be a warehouse but huh. it doesn't it doesn't we don't it doesn't operate as a warehouse um my understanding is that the location was acquired from another auto parts retailer and they operated it as a warehouse, but O'Reilly doesn't operate it as a warehouse. We're talking about the Barry store? Yes. Yeah, but I think it's the one up on, up, you know, where Bond, it's, up by Bond's house, right? Isn't that the one? No, I think we're talking about the one down on. Um, I, yeah, I, can, I can pull up a map here real quick. Yeah, nice. It's the one on, um, I never remember the name of the street. Well, he said Morris, Morrison? Or? So it's, it's, so it's, it's, Carla, it's this. this Oh, this yeah. one, so here's the airport here. So this one here. Oh. Oh, I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, I'm not either. That's the that's the bond. bond that's yeah. the bond location. Yeah, that's the, that's the that's, that's the warehouse. They're yeah. bond warehouse, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I thought you meant the one downtown, Barry. I that, I'm not I'm not familiar with that one. One, He's so. from California, Bob. He doesn't know. Yeah, that. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was I was going to say something about the you guys talking about complaining about nine degree weather, and I wasn't going to say anything because yeah, you better 75, not <laughs> seventy five or eighty five degrees here this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs>
Hope my card starts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Um, um, yeah. Polly, any questions at this point? Um, well, I don't know if this is time to bring it up, but the, uh, the police chief had sort of a concern about security. I didn't know. Well, uh, what? Yeah, that's that's more detail. What? What you? I th okay. we're, we're really trying to get a general picture of what's being done here at okay. this point in time. Well, but do bring, but do bring that up later. Okay. Um, Carla. No, I've never. We've never looked at one of these before, so I'm. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of different. Yeah. 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 Um. Okay. Well, because this is a major um uh, project. Um, we have to go through the uh, site plan review criteria. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I apologize. Apparently, you provided site plan review comments. And I either lost them or I didn't get them, one or the other. But I just got them tonight. So um, did you get these before? If, if I did, I didn't read them. I, I got them. You did? Yeah, there, was, there was really wasn't a whole lot of response to each of the criteria. So, right, okay. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to ask you to walk us through those criteria, if you would, Craig. Well, I know you... there's there's the list of criteria is rather rather lengthy. Um, so I believe that the existing site. Let me dig those up again. The existing site, for the most part with few exceptions. Um, I believe complies with with what is required from this criteria. I know that there are a few other little items here and there. Um, but so this is the document that I have that I our response to it. Um, it is 20 pages long. So this could be a, a long a long area thing here. So just quickly parking. Um, I believe that parking is sufficient as currently provided, if not over provided. I know that, uh, I don't know, I guess with the Staples and the shopping or the grocery store combined, they have a large parking area and they, they allow some um, sharing of that parking space. Um, and Craig, just for your edification, and, and Thomas as well, if, if you're involved in this site, the uh, town of Berlin, within the last five years, has, has done a, a pretty extensive change to their zoning regulations, which, which uh, in, in a lot of cases, reduce the requirement of parking. That, that may help you with any future development that you do on this parcel. So... Uh, uh, I would just keep that in the back of your mind, Thomas, when you're when you're looking at this this location. Anyway, so I mean, our our intention is is to try to again minimize the amount of work that we're having to do here. Um, I don't think I I know that we meet or exceed the amount of parking required, um, and our intention was not to do any work to minimize or take away from parking. So I don't know how we how we discuss that further. Um, you are not making any changes to the parking lot. Is that correct? That that is the intention. The the only intention for making changes to the parking lot would be to, if we need to improve uh, parking for accessibility, um, handicap compliance, ADA, that type of stuff. But as far as um, reducing, adding any, adding additional um, parking stalls, that type of stuff. We're trying to leave it as much as possible as, as far as we comply. I think you mentioned you're going to restrape it. Is that right, right Craig? Uh, I'm trying to, I don't even, I don't know if we even planned on that, but that definitely we can, we can take that into account if that's going to be a, a sticking point. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed what you said, Tom. If they were going to restripe, I, uh, I I recall a conversation. I I think it's it's been ten year plus years. Yeah, if, if you go up there, it, it it needs some TLC. It does, yeah. Yeah, but I guess I guess I'm not sure. Have you looked at the handicap access uh, parking? 
Um, yeah, and, and I mean, I look at it and say, you know, it, it does it does need a little bit of work. Um, but with that, it, the, I think the intent was just to focus on the area where it needs it and not necessarily the entire shopping center or parking lot. So you can see over here adjacent to the Shaw's looks to be in fairly good order regarding parking stalls. But as we get closer to our site over here, um, again, these also seem to be in pretty good order. It's just harder to see the. I don't, I don't know if how old these pictures are and if, if the striping has faded. Yeah, in 2019. So it, I, I don't have any information to say whether it, it needs maintenance as far as repainting and restriping or even slurry work or, or asphalt remediation. Yeah, I, I think from my perspective, I'm not concerned about adequacy of parking. I think you're going to have enough. Yeah. I do know, I do think you're going to want to look very carefully that you meet uh, ADA requirements. Um, they may have changed since that was originally constructed. Mm -hmm. Number of spaces and that type Width, of thing. Widths and loading zones and paths of travel and all those associated items. Yeah. That was my next question. Uh, what about loading zones? So loading zone, we have a, are, are you talking about um, loading zone for merchandise or loading zone for dropping people off? Uh, merchandise. So merchandise, we have a loading dock in the rear. So based off of this <coughs> here site plan, we have a back back alley for lack of a better word, which allows loading a loading dock at this door here, which is an existing loading dock with a roll-up door. But we are also proposing to, um, as another function, just because not everything is accessible through a, a, a tall truck, we will have a loading area back here with a ramp that will allow um, small merchandise and stuff to be transported from within the building to smaller trucks down this ramp or stairs as needed. Is that existing or is that new? This ramp is proposed to be new. And these doors, there is an existing door here, um, right here, but we are proposing to enlarge this door opening to make it a double door to allow some better access through there. To the actual floor plan. So here, so this this gray square right here, if you can see that, is where an existing single door is, yeah. which is just a standard door. We're proposing to infill that, put some a pair of double doors here with new, this is a raised concrete platform or landing that's up about five feet or so, four feet, with a set of stairs down, and then also a, a ramp down for just just for just for fun, no, just just so we can have better access for maybe some larger stuff that needs to be rolled out on a on a cart or or. And that's something. in the back, not on the side. Is that correct? Correct. correct. In and the back, not visible from any public area. Um, the the forest or the the woodlands, whatever you want to call it, is directly behind it. So site plan here. Well, that affects okay. circ circulation around the back. I'm thinking about emergency vehicles. Uh, it appears to have adequate service all the way around the back. I mean, this here is a is a back alley road that goes all the way around the building completely. Yeah. Which is necessary for fire protection. Yeah. Correct. So it will not be impact, impacting that road? Uh, no, it will not. Okay. So then going back to the zoning response letter. So parking, yeah, we can go ahead and look at what we need to do to make sure that our access our our accessible parking spaces meet current requirements as far as size and signage and and making sure that they are even and not But you have you have not looked at that yet. Um 
I believe, let me go back to our site plan here. I know that we have, we did look at it. I'm trying to remember what we discussed as what our scope of work to be. Um, so calling it out as existing and we are under the, under the assumption right now that it is in, in adequate order. But if we need to do some further investigation to confirm that and make those improvements as necessary, that is, we are more than willing to do so. So you're prepared to do that, but you have not looked at it say, per se. Correct. So right now we're we're showing it out as so existing keynotes seven and six existing state um, parking to remain, you know, parking symbol to remain. So the intention right now is that it's adequate that it doesn't need additional work but but if, if no determined that it needs additional work we are of course going to do that as needed i go to this facility every day are those trees really there <laughs> i don't think so i don't see them <laughs> yeah, I don't, don't see them. let's go back to this here so i mean according to this Again, these pictures are five years old or so. Um, there are no picture, there are no trees there. That's interesting. No trees there. There is these trees. Yeah. yeah those, those are there. Are yeah. They? yeah, yeah, they're there. <laughs> but the ones down by where you just showed those handicapped parking, are they there? No, I don't, there's no. nothing here. So no. let me go back to what, what our drawing is. I guess there are trees at the end. Yeah, I think it's the end. So our plans show, yeah, we don't show, we're only showing trees, which I believe are these, which we identified already. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. And it's the ones these that are the So really nothing in between. Okay. Yeah. That's why it seems like there are no trees. <laughs> it's a big parking area. So can I just ask? Something? Yeah, go ahead. How Carla. do the... If it's a major site plan review, does that mean that we, the lands, the new landscaping requirements have to be met, or do, would that only have to happen if the parking lot well, was done? Well, the it, we, when we get to landscaping, we talk about that, but technically speaking, it has to be met because it's a the previously developed site. We do have a provision in our bylaw that say best fit, so that best fits okay. the judgment thing. Okay. Uh, so when we get there, we, right. we can talk about that. Um, uh, and we should talk about that. Yeah. Um, uh, but there are trees there. Um, there's trees at the entranceway. There's trees yeah. in, in, where they're shown, but not, there are no more than what's shown. Right. I think what is shown is all still there. Um, well, but, according to that picture, it, you know, it is. Um, let me, I have some, I have some more recent pictures. Let me see what we've got here. I think I, I think you, you proved right. they're there, Craig. No, that's okay. Yeah, we'll move on from that. I can check on my way home. When we get to landscaping, <laughs> we may get back and revisit that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, um, so I, I think, uh, I think unless there's questions about parking that we haven't raised. Um, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to feel, figure out how to deal with the ADA requirements. Uh, you have not really been specific here as to, have you looked at the new requirements and do you meet them with the parking spaces that have been allocated? Um, I know it can be done, but the question is, do you intend to do it? And you say you do, but you haven't identified it. Could that be a permit well, condition? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, we can make it a permit. I don't like I don't like a lot of conditions because what that means is afterwards somebody has to review and make right. sure you did them. Yeah, that's, okay. that becomes a a nightmare. I like it done before, not after. Well, you still you still kind of have to see if they were they were actually done. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Well, no, then, then we get somebody to test that's been done. Right, 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 right. And then we, well, that is we, going hang, to we hang them. 
going to be. I mean, it, it, obviously, I mean, this is this. Is, I believe that this meeting is for that purpose that we we have this conversation, and then we make adjustments to our proposal, and then based off of based off of this conversation, and we make those adjustments, and then either it's a a another minor review by by your by your people, and then we either go from there or further work is still needed. But push for you, Craig. Yeah, Craig. Okay. Yeah, uh, because we're looking at a screen at about a distance of fifteen feet. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. It, I, I can't. My eyes can't see that far. Um, so it, it's useful to identify yourself when you start to speak. If you've been speaking all along, that's one thing, but and you have been, Craig. Uh, but it, you popped up and I couldn't see who it was. Apologies. I'm sorry. I'm just fine. No, and, and that's the thing is is we are we we want to do again, if if accessible parking modifications and upgrades is a requirement, that is something that we by law understand and have no problem with doing that. So we can make that a, like you said, a condition of approval and move forward from there. Or you could come back to us and say, these are the requirements and this is how we intend to comply with them. That would be maybe preferable to Bob, I think. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how we, let's see how we go here. We're making yeah, a note of that. Let's see how many we have. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. So then moving on. So discussing parking, I think we, um, so we're not, we're not proposing any shared parking. Um, I believe we talked about loading areas. So we have our existing loading dock in the back. I believe that we already comply. Um, okay. We have plenty of off street parking and loading areas continuing on. Um, the, do you, do you tend to have any electrical uh, vehicle charging stations on the extended parking? Um, there are currently no electrical vehicle parking stations. We have not intended to put any. any. Um, if that is a requirement of, of approval, then we will need to consider that. It's Just not. a comment. If you're going to stock parts for uh, EV electric vehicles, it might be a draw to have a charging station. Well, the, but, but the intention also is not to, we, we don't want to have this become an area where people are actually doing maintenance on their cars. So, um, so. No, we don't. Be charging and maintenance is different. No. But, but I believe that if somebody's there working on their car or whatever, that, that might be a, you know, that's, that's a kind of, could be a slippery slope, but I, I understand, um, what are what are Please. what are the requirements for electric vehicle charging stations? There are no 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 no, no, right. no specific requirements in the bylaw. There's a section here that talks about may may provide. So it's there's no requirement. I just I was asking the point. Yeah, just curious. I don't have electrical vehicles, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but <Not> my... <laughs> um. <clears throat> No, I understand. In fact, it is not your intent to have people there very long. You, the object is to get them in, get them out. Correct. Correct. They might we, go to SARS. That's a different story. <laughs> um, so, so moving on to section thirty-two two point H, design and maintenance Craig, standards. Excuse me, Craig. Before you move on, and for Thomas's edification, uh, there is a, a contiguous Honda dealership. Uh, to to your property, I know in the past that um, this this campus allowed them to park vehicles there. As, a, as you said, you weren't going to have any sh shared spacing. I'm just letting you know that 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 was permitted in the past, <clears throat> and so it's something that may be another source of revenue for you guys if you want to go down that road. Um, thanks for the heads up on that. Yeah, not not quite sure I understand what you're saying here. Are you saying that the the extra inventory would park over here? They've done that in the past, yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. I don't I don't know if that 
if that agreement is still in place and if that's something that is going to continue in place. I don't know. I'm I'm out of the loop on that and honestly not, don't. This is Thomas with Shaw. I, I'll double check on that, but I don't think there's an active agreement. Uh, I think there was in the past, but I'm not sure if it's still in effect. So I'll have to reach out to my, my property guys and find out. It was yeah. after Staples moved out. So there was yeah. plenty of room. Stock cars like they used to anyway, so they probably don't need the space. Yeah. Um, okay. Unless there are questions about parking, we no, haven't let's covered. Move on. I'd like to move on to access to circulation. Okay. Are you talking about vehicular or pedestrian? Both. Both. They're both um, covered under section 3203. Okay. So 3203. Let's find where that is. Vehicle, bicycle, pedestrian traffic. Okay, so um, looking at this, we understand that there's been some conversation about, so vehicle, I believe vehicle access is pretty pretty clear. Um, we do provide one exit or one entrance and exit directly to Payne Turnpike North. Um, this has been truncated a little bit just because this is just a long drive onto that. Um, and that is essentially the only access into this site other than some dirt roads, but it doesn't look like those are actual roads that some, they're more like just things that past that people have created. Um, uh, we don't have any type of bike and or pedestrian access to this. I know that that has been something that's been a discussion that is a new design guideline. Um, has been discussed with Thomas briefly, um, but I know the options that have been proposed, um, I don't understand, and we don't understand as a, as a design team and as O'Reilly's don't understand how that becomes a, um, a benefit to this site based on some of the challenges. I know, Thomas, that you've or Tom you've basically noted we've had the discussion of proposing to put a, a a sidewalk in this area along along here um and we and we just don't understand how how that works um from a legal standpoint from a technical standpoint and and really in, you know we've kind of talked about it as being a a sidewalk to nowhere for lack of a better term um so i just we, we're just really scratching our heads on that one our, our bylaw is pretty clear that in this zoning district uh, when there's a redevelopment a major redevelopment that sidewalks have to be on the frontage and as the uh, craig you and i the conversation we had the, the frontage on paint turnpike north that you have there in blue i i know that's pretty much wetland area over there and 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 but our, our regulations say you must so uh, it that, that's something that this board is going to have to you know talk about and and uh, again uh, i our conversation was i was trying to give give a workaround to to what you're showing here in in blue on paint paint turnpike north which in in my opinion would be either very expensive or impossible to do when our regulations say you must do it by doing the one out at the out at the Route 62 intersection. So, um, what is what is this drawing you're showing here, Craig? This, this one I'm got up on my screen right now is just a, a, a Google Images, a Google Earth map <laughs> that shows aerial photography of the area. Um, what was what was the blue line? That blue line was actually it was it was a uh, it showed a route from this location to the other J, J, uh, location that we were talking about um um Ambari. It was just actually showing what the best way to get there would be. For it was just a, a for something that that pulled up, um, and so it was. I mean, I can we try to bring it back. Let's see if it so comes that back. must have blown up Scott Hill Road. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so it's just giving us two options: either go out to Highway 62, or to yes, Scott Hill Road. Right. 
not being super familiar with not being familiar at all with the area. I don't know what the best way to go out there would be. But anyway. So yeah, I mean, I I understand I understand the city requirement as far as must providing um, pedestrian access that on the frontage, but the frontage that this parcel sits on, like you said, is a wetlands area. Um, so I don't know if there's any possible way to do that. Um, I know that Tom and I had talked about trying to put that somewhere off site. But again, there's we have concerns about that as far as who's gonna install that, who's gonna maintain that. And if if other property owners are going to accept that. This is uh, Thomas with the Shaw. I, I also like to point out that that driveway and the parcel is just north of it is not owned or controlled by, by us at all. It's, I believe it's owned by the the um, the Maplewood uh, uh, Travel Center across the street. Are you Thomas? Are you talking about this one here? Yes. Oh, oh right. that's the access to your property. Yes, and it's according to the tax parcel viewer. I I don't see us. I couldn't find a survey to confirm it on, on our legal end of things, but according to the Vermont uh, parcel viewer, it it shows that it's owned by a different entity. But you must have an easement. Yeah, I, I assume it's an easement, correct? Yeah. And, and we're not talking about that parcel, that piece uh, with sidewalk. We're talking about the the ninety degree angle there on Ping Turnpike North. So, yeah, you're, you're either talk, you're either talking about across here. Well, you know, there is a bike lane on the other side of the road. You know, pedestrian bike lane lane that goes alongside of Maplewood. It it was designed that way, but it's not currently marked that way. Well, but there that is that been. is that that has been marked that way in the past. Just it's a painting issue. Yeah, I know. But, right but the, what, yes, what right there. They do you know, you almost see it right there. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it right there. So that is actually pedestrian bike. Uh, yeah. What happens if they do a uh, safe. shared shared use area? Um, and it has been marked correctly in the past. It's just not currently like right. so many things don't get doesn't did not get striped accordingly. Right. But if they did a crosswalk, then you know theoretically there is pedestrian access along that you know the other side of the road. Well, the first problem I have is there's no pedestrian access to Shaw's or to O'Reilly's along the uh, entrance road. In other words. No, there isn't. Although the first, first, part of, first, first part of the word yeah. access is how do you get there? <laughs> and you don't know what you own there? Well, based, based on what we've been able to find is that this, this access road here is know owned by another entity with the assumption that there's a access agreement or easement in place well there must be yeah. yeah that requires clarification um because yeah. the first thing in access to the parcel is how do you get there uh, as a pedestrian or as a bicyclist now a bicyclist could do a shared use as could i suppose a pedestrian but let's face it that's a fairly narrow roadway. Yeah, it is. There really needs to be, in my mind, a, a dedicated pedestrian access from uh, Payne Turnpike to the, uh, the shopping center. And, and I was disappointed to see that there was no easement shown no access shown uh you show the property line as being uh to the um south of that um and no no easement shown at all but you must have an easement yeah the question is what does you what how big is it i mean you've got landscaping along there so that must be the responsibility of shaw's 
So yeah, Th Thomas, we're gonna we're gonna have to look at that closer to see to try to figure out exactly what what that is and who's responsible for what. Hey. Hi, this is Alicia with O'Reilly. I just have a question. Yeah, so terrible. I understand. Um, I understand the the lack of pedestrian um, access and the the need for it. Um, however, I just am curious in terms of execution. So obviously, there is some stuff that we need to work with Shaw and figure out. You know ownership and, and and easements and whatnot. But in terms of execution, the wetland is still a, a, um, a factor. So what, how do we accommodate the request without um, impacting other things that are currently in place? I guess in, in your, if, if the board wouldn't mind explaining to us in an ideal scenario, what are they, what are you expecting um, this to look like at the end? So we can have a better understanding of uh, of the desire here. Well, by our bylaw, right? There should be when when parcels get redeveloped, there should be sidewalk in either side of Paint Turnpike North, right? But this section has wetland, and we're cognizant of that, and we know the difficulty of that. And I thought I heard a member suggest maybe a crosswalk from, from that sign back across to that multi-use path there. I thought I heard that as a possible suggestion. Um, I, again, I'll let the, I'll let the I, I don't vote here, but I, we're trying to work with you as applicants to, to fill this space and, and and meet our zoning requirements. So that that seems to you know be a possibility along Payne Turnpike, but then there's the issue of of the access road. Well, we, your 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 drawing suggests that you, you, I mean, they suggest you have a right of way of some sort, an unspecified width. Uh, it would be difficult to tell talk intelligently about having a a, a sidewalk from Payne Turnpike to the uh, existing sidewalks that exist in front of the um, shopping center without knowing where you own and where you don't own. Uh, it would seem to me that it's clear that you own everything to the south side of that road, but we don't know where the wetlands begin or end. So none of that's been addressed here. But if I were, if I were doing the design, the first thing I'd look at Okay, well, I've got I've got some nice landscaping there. I don't necessarily want to remove that. So, do I have a place I could put a sidewalk there, a pedestrian way of some sort, um, on either side, not knowing what the limits are in terms of uh, easements and property lines. So we don't have we don't have access to that information. Um, you do. Uh, and you need to address that. Pedestrian access is an issue and a requirement. Thomas, are you able to speak to that? Um, obviously, O'Reilly and Craig is on behalf of O'Reilly. We are we are a tenant in this space, so there are certain information that we just don't simply know because we are leasing a building um, or a portion of it. Um, I know Thomas has uh, looked into it, and I think he uh, may need to just provide further clarification, or unless he has documentation to present now. Um, but regardless, it's not that we are neglectful in creating a design that accompanies all of these concerns. It's just um, as a tenant, there's just only so many things that we are responsible for. So it is not natural for us to um take those those things into consideration that doesn't mean that we will not participate or we are you know willing to do the right thing we're just trying to better understand how to um feasible, how to make this feasible in a practical sense um and if it means that we need to you know discuss further with our landlord and 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 whatnot we can but at the same time we're just trying to figure out how to 
given the information that we have or is being presented, we're just trying to figure out how to accommodate this pedestrian requirement um, in a practical manner. Yeah, this is Thomas Lashaw's again. Um, uh, you know, typically when we when we do uh, deals where we put tenants in, you know, we we give them we give them a lot of documentation on things. Uh, those documentations don't typically regard, uh, include easements. You know, we we have stores across the entire state of Vermont, and uh, they've never asked, at least in my experience, they've never asked for um, sidewalks or um, uh, the type of in, improvements for for just you know deals like this only for. When the when the actual parcel is developed or when there's buildings going up, so I, I can't. I mean, I can look more into it, but this isn't typically what we what we see in in um in any type of meetings. And, and then and and this is Craig again, and then maybe it goes back further to the very very beginning. Is that I know that there's been some ambiguity as to far as far as what constitutes a major site plan approval. Um, I know that we've all had conversation with you, Tom, about it, but I just, again, as we've scoured through the documents, it seems like it's just very up to the discretion of the zoning administrator and the DRB board as to what constitutes a, a, a major site plan redevelopment. Well, I shared with you our, in our regulations section, I have to find it here. Major renovation. Um, section three four three zero two site plan review, and and there talks about classifications where a zoning administrator is basically given a a, a recipe to, to determine if it's ma a major or minor, and and uh, the one that one of the items that calls for a major renovation uh, is is if a major renovation of an existing principal building is occurring. Um, in, in my opinion, that what you've spoke about with, with the changes in the building, the mechanicals and all that, that, that that's a ma major renovation. I, I shared with the board our definition in, in from our regulations. Nobody from the board uh, thought that, I, that my, dis my uh, decision on this matter was, was in error. Um, so I, I mean, I, that's, that's why we're here, Craig, right? No, I, I understand, but I just, just for the sake of discussion, it just, um, I, I think that, that there, there's people that were not involved in that conversation that you and I had, that I just wanted to make sure that we were all, all on the same page for that. That's all. I, it may have not got shared with Thomas, I, but I think it got shared with your team that's you're here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, understood. You're clear. Clear enough. Um, well, I'm, uh, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I just, we, Alyssa was able to find something that shows, looks to be a property lines here that I'm going to share real quick. Um, oh, darn it. That's not what I wanted to do. So, yeah, it does look like the actual property line is on the south side of that that easement so we need to we need to look at this closer to figure out how who who owns what and how we have access through here because there's obviously some type of easement agreement here and, and i'm going to caution you this looks like town of berlin tax map data tax map data is should be used for planning purposes historically unreliable yeah okay <laughs> that's the word he's looking for thank you <laughs> fair enough Fair enough. Um, I'm I'm looking at the top uh, in our bylaw. I'm, I'm looking at section uh, four three hundred two thirty two hundred three e four, and it refers to previously developed sites. And we're looking here at uh, where uh, the uh, the town of Berlin's priorities for retrofitting are improvement, safe, and can be an ad pedestrian access. So. I think what we're looking for is an answer, not necessarily a letter of the law, but an answer on how we provide safe convenience. And I would think it's in the best interest, um, although your auto parts, it's still in the best interest of the store to have pedestrian and, and uh, bicycle access. 
Um, who knows? The vehicle may not get there. <laughs> but, you know, um, so I, I think uh, we're looking for a best fix solutions here, given that we have limitations of wetlands. But you haven't even identified what those what We recognize there are wetlands there, but we don't know what the extent of the wetlands are, what can and cannot be done. Uh, so I'm not asking for a wetlands uh, survey per se, but a, a, a mapping, a best understanding would be useful to, uh, to look at this uh, intelligently. And what can we reasonably do that represents a uh, best fix? And with respect to the wetlands, there's an agency, Vermont Agency of Natural Resources, Atlas, that has a wetlands page. I imagine you'll get a lot of that information right off of that where you, you don't have to do any field work or things like that. Well, but you don't need to be a wetland specialist to recognize that there is wet areas that we do recognize that. So um, a sidewalk uh, on that side of the road uh, would not be something we would be insisting on. What we are, are insisting on is a best fix for pedestrian access into the site, off of off of pain term. Yeah, and 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 across it. Yeah, and across. It, yeah, yeah. Um, this is a busy road. Uh, it is getting busier all the time, and O'Reilly hopes it gets busier yet. <laughs> um, we, we have we have changed our zoning regulations in in this district. I, 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 I used to be one residential unit for forty thousand square feet. We have we have eliminated residential density in this zoning district. This is our growth area. This is where the town in the next ten years plans its growth. Okay, there are already plans on the way across the road. Yeah. Right. Okay, but I think I think we we're pretty clear on what that we have a challenge here. Um, and we need to figure out how we're going to address that. I don't think we're going to solve that problem today on this call. So um, uh, I know that that was one of our, our big sticking points here. Um, so if we can move on to maybe um, in through this here, I believe no, vehicular, vehicular access, we're good. Yeah. Uh, Pedestrian bike bike access, we've got some issues, some something to address. Yeah. I do um, I do have one issue on vehicle access. Okay. Uh, as a person who uses this 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 um, uh, facility frequently and live right nearby, uh, it's notoriously difficult to see uh, in both directions as you're exiting, um, especially. Um, uh, there's a, uh, and it, it's not your property, it's a budding property owner, but there is properties to the uh, north that limit your visibility uh, of oncoming vehicles from the uh, right as you're exiting. Mm -hmm. um, so ex exiting and turning right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, exiting, uh, turning left. Exiting, turning left. I, either way, both, both directions. Uh, but what you find is there's conflicts. Um, what you typically find, and it really has nothing, it has to do with uh, driver habits, but people edge forward. And so the vehicle on the right edges forward, it blocks the visibility of the of the vision of the vehicle on the left. I, I, I don't have, I'm not, a, I'm not a vehicle expert here, uh, but it would look to me like there needs to be a fix there. Part of it is you have to be within the last 10 feet of that road to be able to see to the right. And I don't know whether that's that's the, that's that's existing land feature. Uh, I don't know that you correct it, but it's something that I would ask that you look at in the context of your neighbors uh, and recognize that it is there will be accidents there. I, I don't know if there've been any yet, but it is difficult to see out of there. It, and part of it is, and this picture shows it that the grass isn't cut on the neighboring property there. When it's gross tall like that, it forces yeah. vehicles to yeah. snow, snow, snow loads, snow, snow, loads, yeah. snow accumulation on that property and high high vegetation uh, inhibit visibility to the right as you're exiting. Okay, hi. Um, so I hi just there. want to make sure I understand 
the, uh, the concern here. So we have some existing property that is outside of our owner's you know, property, and it is obviously not O'Reilly's. We do not own property here. Um, where the maintenance isn't quite being maintained properly. Um, and so are you asking us to reach out to our neighbors to ask them to maintain and manicure their lawns? Is that, is that the request? I understand the concern. No, there's not a request. I, 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 was, I was speaking simply to inform you that there is a vehicle access problem. And it's not of your making per se. Uh, it, right. it, is, it is, in fact, a problem of the original design. The original design should not have allowed that to exist. Uh, when rights of way hurts, now we're in place now. I'm just making you aware of it. I don't know that we're asking you to fix it. But it will, you know, with more traffic, it will become more problematic. Correct. I think overall, I think this in the way I hear it, and, and maybe I'm misinterpreting it, this all kind of um, circles back to the original pedestrian concern in terms of the current setup is not maybe ideal for today's standards. And so obviously, you know, we want to try to do the right thing at the same time, you know, be mindful of the economic impact this will have yeah. on us and our project. Yeah. Um, so nothing is a is a no, but nothing is a yes either, because I think there is some very prominent constraints. One of them being, you know, ability to do work in a property that is not ours or our owners, and that is not necessarily your issue right now, um, because you have to, you know, establish uh, property lines still. But in terms of correcting an overall global issue, which is the current setup and the current design is not adequate. How are we, how, what is the, what is the ideal, like, end, end um, solution? We may not be able to get to that perfect world scenario, but we, you know, I'm, we're hearing a lot of uh, things that are not necessarily okay or adequate or ideal, but we're not really hearing a lot of um, viable solutions. And for us, we're very limited to what we can offer or what we can do. Um, simply because we do not own it, simply because it is not part of our deal agreement in terms of the lease, um, simply because we are not familiar with the everyday um, dealings that you all are dealing with because we do not reside there. So we're trying to have a better understanding of your perspective, not in terms of a problem, but more so in a solution and what would be a potential viable solution that we can all come to a mutual agreement. So if that would be, you know, a stop sign or a crosswalk or, uh, you know, reaching out to, and now I'm not saying I want to reach out, but, you know, telling the adjacent owners, can you please manicure your lawn better? Or what can we, how can we contribute a positive impact to resolve some of these concerns or lessen the concern a little bit um, while also being, you know, economically mindful of the position that we are in um we are you know from the from our goal and our in our initial design we are trying to take an existing building and do what is necessary to make it habitable but we are not trying to you know redevelop the whole property redevelop the whole building you know our our scope has always from day one been just been to let's take something that's been vacant for an extended period of time and let's bring it up to current standards and i understand that this area has its own rules and regulations and we want to be mindful and respectful of that but there are other things that are currently in place on the property that contradict what the rules and regulations are also requesting so i don't know if there's something we can compromise on or um, you know, lapse on so we can you know get past this problem. And here's what I, here's what I suggest. I'm not a traffic engineer, but I think if you were to look, if you were to have someone to look at this that is a traffic engineer, um, there may be some solutions that, that are not occurring to any of us um, that would uh, make it a safer intersection in the future. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, something that occurs to me right off the top of my head is 
Is the signage adequate now? I, I don't know. I, I never looked at it, per se. Uh, another solution is a traffic stop, a light. That oh, would certainly that would draw it. I'm good. not sure anybody's advocating that either. I'm round, just saying, what are, round, the, what are the alternatives? <laughs> so it, 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 I, I brought it up as an issue. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, I think it's an issue you'll want to look at. Um, I'm not sure this board is insisting you look at it because it is existing condition. But again, yeah. we're looking for best fixes. Uh, one fix might be a single lane out. Oh boy, I don't know. <laughs> well, the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. Um, so the, the, again, it's 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 something that people are more experienced with traffic design than I am would look at and come up with. Well, if Tony Reddington were around, he would say a roundabout. Yeah, well, yeah but you yeah, can't no. afford that. You can't afford that. So. <laughs> no. So, I hate roundabouts. So, oh so, no, they're wonderful. I don't like them. Okay, so so let's not digress. I I, I, I think I, we have digressed. <laughs> yeah, I I believe the the board if, of 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 this picture right now that a sidewalk, some sort of multi-use path going up the right hand side into the plaza, it is a, a higher priority than fixing this exit. Issue. Yeah. The left hand. We agreed. The left hand. Yeah, I was I really only started out in making aware of the issue. Right. So so it's it's not an issue. It's and, yeah. And I just want to I just have to respond a little bit because this is a, a complicated application. I, I recognize that, but you have to recognize that we have to abide by the reg you know, we can only approve applications that meet the regulations. That's our that's all we have the authority to do. So we're just trying to get there. We want to give you a permit. <laughs> right. I mean, we're not trying, we don't want to impede, you know, development in Berlin or, or new business in Berlin. We we are very much pro uh pro business. Uh it's just a matter of we have to we have to be, be able to say that it met the requirements of the zoning up of the zoning regulations. That's all we're trying to get to. And I think Bob just threw that out so you would think about it. And and we understand that I think um, you know we we go the route of putting in a, a sidewalk down here. It's it it goes back to the original. It's outside of property. It's um it's not. It, it, what if the original the owner of the property says no? Like I guess that's my. We're gonna ask. We're gonna try. I'm gonna look into it. But I guess my 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 question is, what if they say no? I don't want to put a sidewalk here. I don't, well, they have I, a, I, I, I don't think we're asking you to talk to the neighbor's ownership. We're asking, in, in my opinion, it's on sidewalk would go on the side where your existing sign is. It, it's more likely that's your property than the side where the car is parked. Okay. No, I think she so said if, if landlord wants to do it. Because so our landlord says, okay, you guys can put a sidewalk here or okay, they will put a sidewalk here. Um, how do how do they put in a sidewalk while not messing with the wetland? Well, that's what you need to find out. What you know, how feasible it is. So, so I'm I'm talking about the entrance going into your looking looking down the the, the lane, right on the right hand side. Right. Everybody sees the Shaw sign, right? Right. I do not. Right. I do not. I do not in that direction that way we're crystal clear mm -hmm. what we're talking about i i, I do not believe that that the, the there's any wetlands on that section of the entrance going into the into the campus we're getting feedback from somebody somebody's giving us feedback on their they're looking at two different devices at the same time um, I, I appreciate not getting that feedback so can, can I think this is one of the things that we need to come back to because yes, but I think we should go that. on and flag other issues so that they know what all the issues are. Yeah, thank you. Good suggestion, Bali. Okay. So um, public transit. 
There um, is transit coming to Shaw's already. There is, yeah. yes. It's there. So does, that mean, does that mean, so we, I mean, there's, it doesn't appear that there's any type of dedicated. Uh, no, I think as long as there's transit. They just, they go into the park, into the fire lane, I, I think. Yeah, I, bel I believe they have a sign there. It's off, just outside the Shaw's entrance. Okay. All right. Um, bike racks, I think we can very easily add bike bike racks outside the store as needed. Um, but I think we talked about that already. Um, let's see here. Yeah. So, so landscaping and screening. Um, we, we touched on this very, very briefly. Cancel. Um, we touched on this very, very briefly. Um, our original intent was not to do any additional landscaping, um, but it. it um, so, it looks like we need to. So we have plenty of street trees, front yard landscaping. Um, applicants must pre preserve or plant at least one shrub for each 10 feet of road frontage and or one medium small tree for each 50 feet of road, road frontage. Um, how does this apply to us considering our road, we don't really front anything. We're, we're, we're tucked back. Your, your, your parcel fronts paint turns like north. So you're saying that all of this, if I go back to the map, all of this that is fronting Turn Park, the Turn Park North, even Paint though this, I don't this is all wetlands with landscaping and everything. Well, it has landscaping already, right? It does, yeah. The natural landscape, yep. <laughs> so would, would that mean that we need to provide additional, I mean, we can't, obviously can't, we're not going to go in there and count trees and shrubs there, right? No, no. I think it's more in the parking Parking area. lot, yeah. The parking lot landscaping, I think, is the most applicable. But. I know uh, it's in your parking lot. <laughs> But that's the thing is that they're talking about front yard landscaping. No, no, 3204I is what I was referring to. 34I. Okay. So applicants in the town center um, plant one tree for every new parking spaces and at least one shrub for every 10 new parking spaces. So are we are we talking about new, meaning the existing that we already have? I I think so, because that requirement I don't think was there when it was first built. Well, but no, it's not new. We're it's not, not new. It's not, not new, new parking. So what when we retrofit? You have that? Huh? When we retrofit, when the retrofitting the uh, the previously developed site, there are requirements for that. Oh. Do you have that, Bob? You had a little while ago. Yeah, I had a minute ago here. Previously developed sites. What section is that, Bob? That's uh, section um, 3204 J8. And here again, it's just one, we're talking about a best fix. Mm -hmm. um, what we might have expected the applicant to do here is say, okay, here are what your requirements, here is what we have. Uh, Either we think it's adequate, which is what you're saying, by virtue of the comparison, or we propose to do this for augmentation, and and that'll be a best fix. That's what I might have expected the applicant to do. So then, then if we take that as our as our basis, um, then what we would do is we'd say, okay. We have to have a tree for every parking space and a shrub for every 10 parking spaces. Um, planting islands and strips must measure at least 160 square feet in area. That's for new. Right, but but I'm saying is, but if we go back- but that, that's the, the, Yeah, that's the standard. That's the and standard. then there's, what can we reasonably do? Um, 
And there's already quite a few trees there. So, so the, I think what Bob's saying is it, perhaps by just counting what's there um, and saying, you know, whether you think you need to add more or not in terms of the shrubbery, but it's difficult because landscape park, uh, parking lot landscaping is tough to keep up and maintain. So I don't like it when we, when, it, when it's put in and then it's <laughs> not <laughs> maintained and taken care of. So I'm, I'm torn on this one, to be honest with you. And so that, that's kind of where we are too, is that you know, by looking at what we have existing, well, you might. We do. We do have some. You have some. You might want to consider some more in the central parts. Just something you know to look at. I mean, this this may sound a little bit. I don't know how the rest of the board would feel about it, but I know sometimes you see, like in the stripes, you'll see actually flower planters in the in the summer or things like that. Just something to give some sort of. Well, I guess I mean we have we have this here more adjacent into the into the Shaw's area, and maybe maybe it's more appropriate to do some some additional landscape islands in there. Yeah. Uh, all right, we'll have to go back and and do some no, counting. But, but again, nothing that's too ex too extreme to maintain. Just maybe something that adds a little bit of visual interest to the parking lot. Um, I mean, like like Tom said, the idea is this area, the zoning was re redesigned for this area to, you know, to create the growth area and to make it, you know, make some design standards for it to be a little bit, to be visually appealing. Yeah, no, I understand. Maybe what you guys could incorporate, because you have this sea of asphalt, is, is put in some uh, green stormwater infrastructure. It's relatively low maintenance. Uh, uh, it it adds some greenery to to this area. Um, that you there's a lot of snow guys out here in the winter time, and they they they're looking to put snow all over the place. I mean, th those these spaces could be where s snow could go. Uh, uh, but it, so uh, Thomas, I don't know if you've been in, if you incorporated any of this green stormwater infrastructure. It's a way to gussy up a, this sea of asphalt with, in my opinion, relatively low dollars. We can yeah, see it. I'm not familiar with that, but I'll I'll ask my my team about it. Biggest thing that's lacking uh, on this end of the uh, mall is because uh, Shaw's the store has. Um, a fair amount of plantings yeah. as a part of its display up front. Yeah. You, get, you get a sense of uh, plantings in the front of Shaw's itself. Uh, in front of where O'Reilly's is, is just nothing. Uh, so there's a breakup in front of the, the, the grocery store. There's nothing to uh, uh, break up the... Uh, sea of asphalt in front of um, the existing uh, uh, O'Reilly plot parcel. Can you can you just can you focus? Can you show me the front of the build, the front of O'Reilly, the spot there? So this here is this right here is the, the, the facing the building. I'm just curious about whether you could put like it could even be something on the walls, like I don't know, you know, like you know, I don't know, just. Nothing, nothing's going to grow underneath that. No, you'd have to put clots underneath them, but just something to make it a little bit more interesting to look at. And and but yeah. okay, you, well, 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 we'll we'll have to go back and, and review this again. Again, I don't know if um, exactly, and then discuss with the, the we'll discuss with the loan, landowner and O'Reilly's as to where where the money is going to be best spent to do some of these things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay. Um, so we know that there are still some some landscaping issues that we need to address. Um, outdoor lighting. I mean, there's quite a bit of existing outdoor outdoor lighting. Um, obviously, in the parking lot here, it looks like it's got brand new LED lights and and standards. So parking is not an issue. We are proposing to add some additional building lighting. Um, on the exterior of the building, 
back to my elevations here. Some just wall packs for mostly for security reasons, um, just to make sure that we have areas that are well lit. Um, but that's pretty much it. I, I feel that we comply with the intent of the the lands or the um, the, lighting, the lighting. outdoor lighting. Yes. Yes, I. Yeah, I'm not sure that lighting is a real, real issue from our perspective. If, if anything, um, what we have had problems with in the past, I'm not sure we have that here, is sometimes there's too much lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, not only does it not meet our standards in terms of being uh, downcast and shielded, but just way too many lumens. So um, I understand that. I, I don't know that I've heard a complaint. I, I don't know that I, I, that I personally feel that that way is about this. So um, yeah. I'm not sure a best fix is necessary. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. So, I, know we're, I don't think we're looking at this real hard. Okay, very good. Um, signs, um, I believe that our, our sign, our proposed signage, um, Ball, we're proposing to use the existing sign monument sign that is out on turn uh, Bain Turnpike, and then also a sign that we have shown on the building, and that's that's about it. Um, I know that this is typically a, a pretty straightforward thing, um, and usually doesn't prevent um, development for the most part. There'd be no issue. Okay. But you do have to know the dimensions and stuff, right? I'm I'm sorry. What was that? Uh, nothing. Okay. <laughs> no, I just wanted to make sure I didn't, I didn't miss anything here. No. So let's see here. Um, I think that has a tag. <laughs> um, outdoor use area. I mean, it, it is what it is. But I don't think we need to have any di outdoor dining areas or no. outdoor <laughs> congregation or anything like no. that. Um, Don't you want to have sidewalk sales? <laughs> no, actually. Uh, <laughs> well, sometimes businesses will supply a, a picnic table. Picnic for table, yeah. Right? I mean, that 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 area as you're driving into your campus on the right hand side, I think would be a, a good spot for something like that. For employees or oh, for anybody. Yeah, for employees, yeah. Yeah. I need to have a lunch break. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think this. Oh, never mind. But it's, I'm yeah. good. We're not advocating. Oh. No, we're, we're not going to make that a condition. No. <laughs> Can't tell if your guys are joking or not. <laughs> no. Uh, I don't think she's joking, but I don't think it's not going to be a condition. Okay. Um, and then performance standards. I mean, we don't have any. We don't have any, no, we're not storing or processing or anything like that. Um, we're good. Everything there. Yep. I mean, I guess, I guess erosion control and stormwater management was kind of talked about briefly, but I mean. Not redevelopment, so. It's, it's kind of, it is, it is what it is. We, I mean, maybe as we address some landscaping it, we can address some some of this i don't know is does anybody know if there's any stormwater issues or does this site cause problems with flooding to adjacent areas or anything like that that could or should be addressed it, it does not if you on your aerial that the pond down below collects collects all of that uh, you you have an existing stormwater discharge permit from the state of vermont uh, for the entire parcel now, I don't know whether that meets, again, those standards have been upgraded and the laws uh, governing that have changed enough to still look back at um, uh, pre-existing developments. Um, uh, certainly we've seen that uh, with the hospital, we've seen that uh, with the um, uh, Berlin Mall, and I don't know, but the as owners of this property, um, uh, there should be should be proof in your files as to whether or not uh, you cur meet current standards, and if you don't, what you need to do up to improve that. That's a state requirement, not a municipal requirement. 
from our perspective is you have a state stormwater discharge permit. And that's all we look for in terms of compliance with that part of our bylaw. So, so it just makes make sure I understand that that we do have a permit in place, but we may have to apply for a new one because of new guidelines. Is, is that how I understand that? You, you should check with the agency natural resources to that end. I I can get you the contact information over there. But I, but but Shaw's or the previous owner should have been notified if in fact you do not meet current standards. The state has aggressively gone out and double checked all old stores, uh, stormwater discharge permits that were issued under previous guidelines. And if they determine they don't meet current standards, they have notified the owners. Okay, so it's not it's not something that if, if it's in place, it's grandfathered in and it's accepted until nope. until a new development or a, something nope. else is triggered. It's it's nope. these are the guidelines, fix it or else. Yeah, correct. Okay. Okay. And you would you would have been again the owner would have been notified. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, with that being said, we're not, we're, we're not aware of anything. Yeah. I mean, with that being said, that's how we responded to the the, the zoning <laughs> ordinance comments. Um, and I think that we were aware that these were some of our our sticking points as far as landscape and site access. Um, the, the and then I think it was Polly brought up the letter that came from the police department, which was something that we came in the last two days or so. Right. And was something that is new to us. Um, and we did, we did a little bit of research recently on that. Um, and according to the people at O'Reilly, the local ma managers who manage other stores in the area, um, it hasn't been a problem. We haven't had, there hasn't been an issue of theft or or other some of the other concerns that the, the police department brought up. I, I think at the end of the day on that letter, Craig, he said, let's just have a, a, a cooperative relationship. I, I don't think he's asking for anything outside of outside of that. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's I mean, fair enough. I mean, I know that there have been okay. I mean, so are you not we're not asking for anything additional? I, I, I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, and and Thomas, just for your edification, th th this campus um, uh, has a fire suppression system. And if you're new owners, I would I would take a look at that that uh, mechanism and and that infrastructure. There, there is town water at the curb, and uh, in my opinion, this campus, this campus would be best served by connecting with town water. Uh, we've got a, a 480,000-gallon storage tank to fight fire. I think you guys have a 35,000-gallon tank. So um, I, I've, I've had this conversation, or tried to have this conversation with previous owners. And, and I'll gladly hit discuss this off offline uh, if you'd like to continue it. Yeah, I've I've talked to my construction team, and they they've told me that the the tank, the reservoir tank, has been recently relying in the last like decade or so. And I think there's also a um, uh, a fire pump that's being replaced. Uh, I think they have a permit for that right now. So I, 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 as far as servicing by the municipality. Uh, you know, we we monitor our wells and and look at the output, and uh, they get tested annually. We're we're pretty content with them, but that's for my construction team to 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 work with you all on that. So, okay, okay. So we gotta get come so come back on the issues that we talked about. Yeah, we will. I think, we will I think, go ahead. I'm gonna say we'll we'll go ahead and take a closer look at at the few things that we we discussed. See how we can address some of these challenges. Um, reach out to Tom there and, and kind of um, use him as a sounding board 
as we look at this closer, once we have some better information and then um, resubmit as needed with our modification to these, this site plan. Yeah, we've, we've raised a number of issues. I, I, think, I, I think the pedestrian access issue remains the single largest one that you really haven't addressed to our satisfaction. Um, the handicap spacing and the parking. Yeah, that could be solved, but it needs to be solved, the handicap yeah. access. Um, and very frankly, that's probably something you want to do on your own because the method of uh, enforcement is, out, is beyond the town of Berlin even. Okay. Anybody in, on, in the public that is handicapped can enforce that. Thank you. Yeah, we are aware of that. I'm sure you are. What does that mean? I didn't know that. Yeah. Basically, what it means is that if if you're Joe Public and you find something that is not in compliance with accessibility, you can file a lawsuit and it gets ugly and messy fast. Really ah. fast. Well, that's, that's, that's been in place for 15 years or more. Speaking yeah. with the ADA. The ADA. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there are there are lawyers and people that make a living of doing that from solely. That's their full their job. They go around to to construction sites, especially new construction, and they they find something that's not compliant compliant, and they they serve papers for for a lawsuit and strict liability. Yeah. Strict liability. Yep. Wow. Okay, especially the government. Good. Didn't teach them that in law yeah. school. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Good. So we look, for, we look forward to um, uh, getting back. When 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 do you think you can get back to us on this? Um, well, we need to we need to can reconvene with with O'Reilly and then also with Albertsons and Shaw's and see what uh, what the implications are here and what the what the dollar amounts are going to be that are associated with this additional work. And see where we go from there. Do you have a, a timeline that you're looking at for trying to get the project started, completed? I guess it's new. I suggest you work with Tom because I think we also have a schedule that gets nasty in the next yeah. few months. Yeah. So getting on our uh, getting on our docket may not be that simple either. So it'd be good to plan in okay. advance. Okay. Um, and just to answer the original question, um, we we are hoping to open this uh, location next year for 2024, uh, but that is dependent on when we can receive permit, okay. obviously. Um, so you plan to start as soon as you get a permit, essentially? Yes, that is our intent. Okay. Good. Thanks. Well, it may not sound it, but we're really anxious to have help facilitate this. <laughs> yeah, we really are. <laughs> no, yeah, no, the building's been empty. Uh, that that site's been, yeah. yeah. We were Agreed. excited to hear that that empty storefront would be filled. We, I was hoping for a restaurant or a movie theater, but anything's better than nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, we will do our do what we can to to make this happen and within within our constraints and with that i don't think we have any more questions or comments greg thank you thank you, you. And your team thank you thank you thomas thank you um we have uh we have one minutes. other item of business tonight um that we should take care of and that's that's the minutes of a meeting that occurred back in July. I was gonna say we haven't met for so long. Um, we must have gone through them though and made corrections. We we the the, the reality is is uh, uh, at least three of us commented and and nobody had corrections. So okay. yeah. the draft the draft minutes uh, stand. Okay. Good. And for the record, I'll move that we approve those minutes as prepared by uh, Carla. Second. Second. Discussion? <laughs> no discussion. All those in favor of that motion, please say goodbye by saying aye. 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 And Polly says aye. So, yeah, just a formality. Um, but, yeah, no, uh, I think we all looked at them and, and thought they were good the I way they were. I remember now and that you mentioned it. <laughs> thank, thank you, Carla.
Yes, you're welcome. Greg, can you take your your screen down? I am trying to leave actually, and I can't find the right button. <laughs> 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 Sorry, yes. we're really messing up your guys' meeting here. Um, Can you just, you know? Yeah, I, that this is bizarre that it's not allowing yeah. me to do anything here. There you go. That's something just went. Yeah, yeah. I just now, now you just see my messy desktop on my computer. All right. Here, that's all. Let's see here. I'm going to kick I you have out. Moves like that every I'm going to kick day. you out. I think. Yeah, if you if you can kick me out, that I'm I'm more than I won't be offended. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. So can I ask a question? Yes. Um, so is that is the hearing closed? Is it is it just blank? Do they need oh, to we didn't continue it? Yeah, we we you know we failed to we failed to take an action on it, Carla. So it's a good point. Uh, uh, and we should have done it with the applicants here, but we can notify so them they, afterwards that yeah, we don't so have to be recess to. We yeah. have to continue, continue. But they didn't tell us when they could come back. Right, we're going to have to continue it to a uh, to a future date. Is there a meeting? The first one in uh, uh, 2024 is open January 2nd. So why don't we just continue it to then, in the hopes that yes. they can? Yeah, so yeah. we'll be able to. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just continue it to the. First time, first January second. Shouldn't take that long. It really, shouldn't take that long to resolve this issue. Yeah, it's not a it's not a big budget item, and it's more a matter of figuring out how to get it done. Well, I was sort of surprised that they didn't really do their homework. No, they didn't. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Are they off? No. Okay. Um, do we have anything else? So this is still a public meeting. Um, uh, no, move, that's, 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 the only, that's the only thing we okay, have on the we agenda. We have to continue it, though, don't we? Yeah, we, I, I'm looking for a motion to continue this to uh, what date, February? January 2nd. January so 2nd. Moved. Motion second. made by Carla and seconded by Polly to continue this hearing until the 2nd of January. Um, that's a horrible day for a meeting. I know. <laughs> you one made the motion. Well, you know what? It's only two days before Thanksgiving. This is a horrible day for a meeting, too. <laughs> That's true. Good point, Polly. We're here. Okay. Um, for for us retired people, it's all the same. You, you're, 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 you're constantly <laughs> evading my private time. <laughs> love it. So, we need to vote, Bob. Uh, all those in favor of that motion, please sit by by saying aye. Thank aye. you. <laughs> aye. And continue. And you'll share that with the uh, with the, I will. <clears throat> we adjourned. Uh, um, yeah. Do we have anything you need to know to let us know about Tom? Uh, the we are meeting uh, next two weeks from today on the uh, McGee, McGee family auto parts. That's the application I looked up today. <laughs> <laughs> you're, and, you're all ready for that. <laughs> and the. Uh, uh, the the last in December, I think it's the nineteenth. I can't remember now. Is uh, the Central Vermont Hospital? It's yeah, and and it, that's they're coming in just for a sketch plan review, so there won't be testimony taken. Uh, they they are uh, looking at a acquiring a piece of property off of Vine Street and making an early. Uh, uh, oh, learning school. Uh, center there, mm -hmm. including a daycare. So they want to to uh, talk to the DRB and work through any uh, of concerns that on you Bunch folks Street. may have at the old um, school, the church. Seven Day Avenue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's exciting. They um, so they want to do a sketch plan and just get the temperature of the board before they make a, a formal application. Sure. That same night, uh, you may recall that that when Starbucks and Fox Run got permitted, they also did a subdivision, and and a uh, requirement of that subdivision uh, was that they come back to this board with the final plat. They are now ready to do that, and that'll be that'll be the second half of that 
meeting on what date is that i think it's the 19th i'll make them check I don't that's right to check them. there aren't that many dates left i think that's right because isn't the next one like the fifth and then yeah days after would be the 19th yes yeah okay good all right um if there's no further business i would entertain a motion to uh so moved <laughs> adjourned <laughs> adjourned Bobby second and uh Polly, you second you did you i seconded okay all those in favor aye aye we haven't been here this late for a long time thank you everyone oh. I know. Have a nice Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye. Happy Thank Thanksgiving. You. Bye. Bye-bye.